everybody, Kieran O'Callaghan here, and today I've got a, a magazine retrospective for you, and uh, this will be a two-parter, this one, and uh, I've done lots of these on the channel before, as you know, uh, looking at all sorts of stuff, um, like CBG, you know, the big name magazines, I've looked at uh, Game Pro quite recently, I've looked at Games X magazine, I've looked at Ultimate Future Games, um, your Sinclair, Sinclair user, absolutely all sorts. Uh, SD Action was another one, yeah. And speaking of SD Action, we're going to look at another one from the 16-bit era and also another UK magazine. And this is Ace, which is probably not so well known. Um, it wasn't one of the best-selling magazines, um, but it went on for quite a while. As you see, it won Magazine of the Year, apparently. Um, but it went on for quite a while. I can't remember exactly how many issues. I'd have to check that. Um, but it was certainly around for a good few years. And in many ways, I'd describe Ace as the predecessor to Edge. It shares quite a lot in common with Edge, um, being that it was a more serious, multi-format magazine. Uh, so where you had CMVG, which was more aimed at the uh, the teenage and young, young audience, you know, with its comical style and cartoons and irreverent humour and stuff, Ace was was definitely the more serious one. I never bought Ace that often. I generally only bought Ace if it had something in it that interested me um, because I, I did find it a bit serious um, back then. But they did try to cover a lot of different stuff. I mean, say it was 16-bit focused, um, but not Zero. Zero was another one around at the same time, actually, um, which was similar to Ace in that it was a more serious adult orientated magazine. Uh, I'll look at Zero at some point. I don't have any issues, but there is some I'd like to acquire, so I probably will pick some up. Um, but yeah, uh, but you can see, I mean, this is a issue from 89. I've got some from 91 here as well, like the two in the background, you can see they're from 91. Uh, I've got one from 89. I think I've got three from 91 in this, this lot here. Um, so if you think that the person who, who these came from obviously didn't buy that often themselves, who knows? But... It's the same, 60 bit focus, but the early, earlier in the issues, they still covered like the CBC Spectrum 64, but Germany just gave them small columns uh, within the magazine. Almost like CMV, CMVG actually did the same towards the, towards the end of the 8-bit era where they started to focus a bit more on the consoles and handhelds and 16-bit computers, and they just used to give the 8-bits like these small column pages. So Ace was uh, similar in that regard. Uh, and then... Ace did start to look at consoles as they came in as well, so as it says Nintendo and Sega. And later issues I've got like this one from 91, which I'll show you quickly. Um, well, that does, that's not a very good example. That doesn't say it. This one over here, though, um, does, because this one says uh, Amiga ST, PC, Mega Drive, Game Boy, Lynx. See, for Famicom, it's interesting that I mentioned Atari Lynx on the cover, um, especially for me, which is one reason why I started buying some of the, these magazines. But yeah, uh, sometimes in the earlier issues they did give away uh, gifts. So that one, for example, had a stereo audio cassette with it. I, I think and there was a few issues where they gave away dual Amiga ST discs as well. I seem to seem to remember that they did that at some point. But there we go. This is Ace. So Ace stands for Advanced Computer Entertainment, as you, as you see. Um, but we'll have a, a look at a couple of issues in this video and a couple of issues in the next video, uh, which will stop. The video being too long otherwise i did consider looking at all four issues in one video but i think it would have just been too too long uh, uh and i found that um when i do really long videos especially on stuff like magazines people tend to switch off towards the end they get a bit bored so we'll try to to keep them a bit shorter for you uh so there you go started with a nice advert actually for us gold capcom stuff um so did this capcom label that was essentially just us gold but there you go last jewel lead storm Tiger Road. Um, I really liked Lead Storm and I really liked Tiger Road. Last Jewel, not so much. So there we go. So there's our contents. So I think you can already see by the, the visual style and stuff and what's in it, it's a bit more of a serious adult magazine. Uh, it, was, it was Future Publishing. I thought it was. I, think I wanted to, to double check before I said that. So obviously Future Publishing do, do Edge. Um, so... Yeah, so when I said it was a, a predecessor to Edge, it very much was a predecessor to Edge. 
because it was also future publishing so i'm pretty sure that edge did replace ace i'm pretty sure that was how when it, when 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 ace went edge was the magazine that replaced it uh, another year scold advert so the engine arrives so compact disc cd-rom hits british shores with a vengeance but largely without software only three cd-rom games are in existence at the moment two of them are for the pc engine so that's interesting talk about an early um, look at the pc cd-rom and again once again the rumors are bound that the the pc engine was going to hit the uh the uk at some point which it never did unfortunately so there's obviously that screenshot there is actually street fighter and there's our type up there they're comparing the PC Engine to the ST to show you just how good the PC Engine version of R-Type was, uh, which it really was. It was a, a magnificent. I had a friend with an import PC Engine, and he had, did have R-Type, and I was blown away by how uh, close to the arcade it was. I mean, to me, it just looked arcade perfect. Uh, great advert there for the real Ghostbusters by Activision. Cool to see. So letters. Again, you see, this kind of shows the serious nature of the magazine because in, say, CMVG, this would have had drawings that, people had sent in and stuff like that and pictures and all sorts of things like that wacky stuff um whereas this doesn't have any of that uh look, have a look on the road at micro pros there's like, their port of xenophobe down there which is cool to see a nice amiga advert so previews go through that arcade ace whiz by psycho no, I don't remember that. Wheels Runner. Don't remember that either. God, games I totally don't remember. Extended Play, some more famous stuff down there like Double Dragon 2, Turbo Outrun, Iron Man Off-Road, etc. So let's look at music. So they did just cover games. They looked at some more serious stuff as well. Not a lot. It was mainly games focused, but they did look at some more serious stuff. So there you go. They're talking about using... Um, the sizes and stuff like that and the different computers the options for them obviously they say the st was the the best computer for creating music on because of its midi ports understandably fright night screenshot from the arcade game there was no arcade game i don't believe uh so this is amiga assume for your st but it's funny because steve back actually said who created it and pete lyon he said that there was never an ST version planned. It was always intended to be Amiga only because of the um, the graphics on it were so advanced that the ST couldn't do them, apparently. Volume 2.2. Archipelagos, which I loved. And actually, I want, need to mention here is the, the, the strange way that Ace did ratings. So they gave a rating out of 1,000. So you see, they give 910. Which is crazy because the only magazine I've ever known that did ratings out of 1000. We also did this interest curve thing where they th predicted how long they thought you'd be playing the game for, which is again was very original. Never really saw that in any other magazines um, at the time. Great advert for the all awesome Silica shop where I bought my Jacob CD and many Jacob games. Uh, ST for 299, 499 for 1040. Very good. 3D Paul, I ludicrous. Didn't like that. I like 3D Paul, I'm guessing though, yeah. 8839. So there we go. So it would say which version they were reviewing it on, but they'd also say other other formats that it was going to be available for um, or was available for. So this is interesting. I mentioned the PC engine at the beginning. This is a you know an advert here, literally just for import PC engines. But how official does that look? So that look really does look like they're selling an official PC engine. And NEC actually got really upset about these kind of adverts. So they actually paid for advertising in magazines at the time, basically saying that there was no official PC engine, but it was coming. Um, of course, we know that it didn't properly come. It did kind of, but I've covered that in another video. Uh, it's a long story. I'm not going to go into it here. Um, but look at my video for um, story of the European PC engine, if you want to know more on, 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 on all of that. So here's some Sega reviews. So they've done some small ones there. So Bomber Raid, uh, Ease, and Cyborg Hunter. Precious Metal Compilation, Federation of Free Traders. Prison, Emmanuel. <laughs> Soft porn game, 636. Uh, quite kind about that. Prison, they quite liked that. I don't think I've played that at all. It's ST as well. Bike Pro Soccer, brilliant. I love the way they did this, Bike Pro Soccer. 
because it's an advertisement that says advertisement along the top but they made it look like it was a review for the game and even gave it ratings out of 10 which is a bit cheeky really f-16 combat pilot was regarded by many as being the d, d flight sim for 16-bit computers for a long time cga version as the sd version which is the best version because it's faster than the amiga version 952 exile that's a great little game by um uh is it houston who published that i think it was houston it was originally on bbc i think but then they they did um yeah so he looks at the bbc version then they did do a 16-bit version as well uh nintendo stuff so nintendo nes but that time everyone just called it nintendo so castlevania goonies and gradius in crowd what a great compilation that was i had that for the spectrum really one of the best compilations uh possibly even the best um for the spectrum we look at the stuff you got in it grise Reiki, contra combat school Carnov, barbarian platoon crazy cars target renegade the last ninja and predator great really great blast droids i loved loved blast droids so they even gave that a coin up score for arcade accuracy which is interesting as well Thunderwing, whatever that is. They reviewed the Amiga and the Spectrum version. I really like the Spectrum version. I think they're a bit, a bit harsh there. Uh, do you want to go to the Commodore show? There we go. Great advert for Time Scanner. Really good that was. Vindicates again, another another coin up conversion. So that's the ST version they reviewed there. They liked it. 806. So I liked, I liked Vindicators. Operation Neptune, Chicago 30s. Ballistics, Cool Road Brasses advert. Jug. You'll notice that a lot of the, the reviews, actually, uh, you might have noticed already, are ST rather than Amiga. And that's because in these days, uh, 89, the ST was considered the main 16-bit format still. So the ST version often actually came out first, maybe even a month before, usually something like that. Uh, and then the Amiga version was ported from the ST version. But of course, that changed later on. So budget bargains, Chase, Rebel Star 2, and Africa. Soccer Q, Twin Turbo V8, Codemasters, a nice rip-off of Outrun that was. Some stuff by Zeppelin and Codemasters. So yeah, it's really cool. Vance Angels Dragons advert. So there's uh, a Sega advert. So there we go. 3D glasses were 40 quid. It's very expensive back then. Uh, I mean, if you consider that a mask system you could get for 79.95. So the 3D glasses were half the price of a mask system, which seems stupidly expensive. It really does. So there's some um, tips and cheats, maps, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I'll skip through that a bit. Sega with tips and cheats. More guides. Space Harry in there. Okay, plus. Run the Gauntlet advert. SSI advert. So he's looking at some graphics there, so again, more serious stuff. Uh, adventure games, war games special. Ace Great Games, so he's trying to get you to buy stuff from them, uh, as well as t shirts and joysticks and some subscriptions and stuff. You usually got money off if you bought a subscription. And this is a cool thing that Ace did the pink pages at the back. I um, always thought this was pretty neat. Um, where they would focus on sort of sites, certain things like mini reviews. So there, there they've got loads of small reviews for Sega, and they would quite often have a guide to consoles in the pink pages as well, consoles to computers. So then it goes into Nintendo um, PCs. What have they got to offer? So that's a breakdown of the best PCs at that time in the market. The PC wasn't really seen as a games machine, but that told you what capabilities they had. Console hardware upgrade guides. So these were really cool. It was really techie stuff and no no color pictures or anything it kind of goes into more about their kind of serious uh, nature of the magazine actually with the pink pages helplines and adverts and various upgrades and stuff chicana they were big importers especially on pc engine i think that's where my friend got his from actually was chicana so there we go nice advert for arnie and red heat on the back there that's their first one so we'll have another look at, uh, say, another issue here. Uh, so this is issue 42 from March 1991. Cr 
Crime Buster on the cover there, and the CCTV is mentioned in, on there as well, which is interesting. So let's get started on this one. So this is a good couple of years later, so we should see a shift in 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 the contents, which is interesting to see one issue after another like that. Like there'll probably be that even looking a lot more Amiga stuff um, as opposed to ST in this one, and probably more console stuff as you'll find out. I open the holder, nice advert there. Philips launches new audio system, Game Boy gets serious. What's that? Duck, DuckTales. Battle Command. Uh, it's kind of a sequel to Carrier Command, but in a tank. There's our letters part. And there's good old Special Reserve. With their adverts, we have to join them. But if you joined them, you got cheaper prices on your games. So Insanity USA, so hits the Las Vegas CES show, I believe. SNK and stuff there. Turbo Graphics, there's a links down there as well. That's the it's a new links there, so obviously the links too is probably only just being launched at this point then. Virtual sex, interesting. Early look at uh, virtual reality. Oh, I've got to love these old um, adverts trying to encourage you to dob your mates in if they pirated games like anyone actually did that, offering like up to a thousand pounds if you dobbed someone in for pirating games. Brilliant. Killing Cloud. There we go, looking at EA and Lucasfilm there. Fright Night. That's uh, Peter Molyneux, isn't it? Larry's, Guru Larry's best mate, Peter Molyneux there. What a great photo of him, looking at some fish. Advert for the one. Um, which was similar in that it just but it just covered the 16 bit computers Amiga, Atari, ST, and PC, and then it split into separate magazines. Actually, there was the one for Amiga, the one for ST, which didn't actually go on for that long um, after the magazine split. I think there was the one for PC as well. So there we go, screen test, still using that same system um, with the score out of a thousand. So Rise of the Dragon, there's PC, so if we're looking at PC VGA graphics now, so big change. So Dragon's there to Time Warp, that's ST and Amiga. Wrath of the Demon, Amiga, so you've sort of seen more Amiga stuff already, as I said. Uh, Team Suzuki, it's the Amiga version there. MiG-29 Fulcrum, again, it's Amiga review, so you'll see massive change. Hard driving too, Amiga. Um, Amiga, Obitus again, so we're not seeing the ST stuff so much now. Night Shift, Amiga PC. Uh, Zavathrista, it's Amiga. Windsurfing zombies from outer space. Okay. So there's lots of reviews there. Narc, that's the Amiga version as well they've looked at there. But Crimeway, oh no, that's Crimeway. Oh, surely that's, well, that's a different game. Oh, I see. It's a similar to Narc. It's like a ripoff of Narc. Huh, don't remember that at all. But that's on ST. So it's interesting they've done them side by side. Battle Squadron, which on the cards, that's Mega Drive. So you see a full page uh, Mega Drive review. You saw that the console reviews in the last one were relegated to those little columns on all on one page, whereas this is given full pages to console reviews. So there you go, you've got Super Mario Land, um, you've got Gradius, Super Mario World, that should be really, shouldn't it? Um, there's some Game Boy stuff like Ro brilliant Robocop and the brilliant Chase HQ. Ace Guide to the Greatest Games of All Time Part 2. Interesting, because you've even got like ZX81 games and stuff there. Really interesting. BBC Micro Games are spotted there as well. Updates on um, stuff that's coming out and reviews, and that's the small reviews as well. So, for example, there's some Spectrum reviews in there, so that's what's saying about the 8 bits getting relegated now to these little columns on the pages. Uh, we're very unkind to stun runner, rightly so. The spectral version is terrible, and they should have bloody done it. When a fantastic Toki coin op has a pretty good competition, isn't it? R360. So, um, they look at the uh, 
arcade show there says Atari Games is the G Lock R360 there. It's the Sonic Blast Man, it's gonna say there's a Neo Geo King of the Monsters down there. And then we're into the pink pages. So what have we got in the pink pages in this one? We've got the top games for each computer. Uh hard sell. So this is what I'm saying about the, the guide to different consoles and computers. So there we go. It's even got like the Atari twenty six hundred there. So saying about you've got the twenty six hundred and seventy eight hundred, so they've, they've actually dumped them together there. Um so obviously it tells you the palette and, and whether they're worth buying, so star ratings. So they gave the twenty six hundred like one star for everything. Because by then it was pretty old, obviously, and that was still available to buy. And the seventy eight hundred got two stars for everything. The links they really liked. Because the links got five stars for graphics, five stars for sound, one for expansion, but overall two. Uh the but the reason why they only gave it overall two there was because they're saying that it doesn't have enough games and it's too expensive at that time. Uh, that was about to change. Uh, so we go. All the others. Neo Geo and stuff there. So there's some interesting little bits. Of, again, more about consoles and computers and stuff. So uh, more info there on the ST and Amiga. Stuff that's going on, like news and things like that. Some more small reviews diary of things that are happening in the uh, industry and uh, classified ads and all that stuff in there and a nice advert the knock on the back so that's it that's the end of my uh, first part of a look at um, Ace magazine um, I thank you for watching and um, join me in a few weeks time uh, for the second part of my look at Ace magazine because I like to I like to give a bit of a break and and look at something else next week and then we'll be back for some more ace action and uh i'll, I'll be the lad and i'll see you again for the video very soon bye bye